Hilchais Kriyas Shema, Perek Sheni. The laws of reading the Shema, chapter 2. Yesterday we defined what it is that you have to read and when you have to read it. Today, we're going to go into many cases where a person is occupied with something else. And the time of Kriyat Shema arrives, what should he do? And we're also going to talk about the reading itself. How to make it a perfect reading. Here we go. But first, Rambam gives us an introductory halacha. Halacha Aleph, HaKorei Shema. Somebody who reads the Shema, V'lo kiven libo, the Pasuk Rishon, Shehu Shema Yisrael, and he didn't have intent at the first verse, which is the verse of Shema Yisrael, just those six words, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, if he did not have kavana, lo yatsa yedei chovato. He has not fulfilled his obligation. The hashar, but the rest of the Kriyat Shema, im lo kiven libo yatsa, even if he didn't have in mind, just read the words without understanding what he meant or thinking about what he meant, it's okay. He fulfills the obligation. Even if he was practicing. Let's say his parsha was Vayet Hanan, where you have the Shema passage. He's reading in the Torah. He didn't even mean to fulfill his obligation, but he happens to read the Shema or Vahayayim Shamoa or Vayomer in the Torah. Or he was a sofer stam, he was a scribe. And he's editing a Torah scroll, he's checking a Torah, and he happens to check these three portions, the Onat Kriya, at the time of reading. Yatsa, he fulfills obligation. He has to have intent only in the first verse. Everything else is okay. What does it mean, intent? Intent, this, the commentaries say, first of all, intent that you're doing Hashem's mitzvah, in general. But more specifically, the intent of the verse, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokim, Hashem Echad, is to declare Hashem's unity and to declare Him king over the entire world. Yichud Hashem, Hamlachato, unity of Hashem and making him king. And that's why it's so important. Especially in Chasidut explains that the whole reason a person came down to this world is to make the world a little more batel to Elokut, a little more nullified to godliness. So when you say Shema, you're literally fulfilling the purpose of your creation. Therefore, you have to be aware of it, you have to have intent. It says the Rambam Halacha Bet, Kol Adam Korin Kedarkan. It's interesting. Every person can read the Shema whatever way he is. Ben Omdin, Ben Mehalchin, Ben Shochvin. You can be standing, you can be walking, you can be lying down. Ben Rochvin al Gabe Behema. You could even be riding on an animal. We don't find that you have to be, you know, in position for saying Shema. You can say it as you are. The Asur Likrot Kriyat Shema, however, it is forbidden to read Shema. Vehu Mutal Upanav Tuchot Bakarka. If you're lying down with your face down. Or the opposite, O Mushlach al Gabo Upanav Lamala. Or lying down on your back with your face up. So directly up or directly down is forbidden. You can read it while lying on your side. What if you were very fat? So fat that he can't turn over to his side. And he's lying in bed, he wants to read Shema. Or he was sick, he physically can't turn over. Just turn a little bit. Incline a tiny bit your body to the side and then read. So now that we know that you're able to do Shema in many positions, so the Rambam is going to now go to talk about reading Shema in many different situations. First, let's start with the situation we already, we already mentioned. The person's walking, and he wants to read Shema while he's walking. He's allowed to. However, he needs to stop for the first verse. Shema Yisrael Hashem Olokin Hashem Echad, you should freeze. Wherever you're walking, if you're in the middle of walking, stop, say that verse. And the rest you can read it while you're walking. Next situation, what if you were sleeping? A person is sleeping and his friend sees that it's coming the time for reading Shema and he fell asleep. Pain him, hurt him, wake him up till he reads the first verse. That's the most important part he has to be fully awake for. After that, iman asatu shena, if you see sleep is overpowering him, ein mitzahrin oto. We don't pain him. The commentaries say we still wake him. You have to make sure he says the whole shema. But you don't have to give him pain so that he's alert and saying it with focus. Only the first verse has to be said with focus. Everything else, you can have him say it in the middle of his sleep, as we'll actually see later on today about somebody who reads shema when he's half asleep. So there's one mistake there. Sorry, there. the first verse is the first verse. Baruch Shem is... No. Yeah, Rosh Hashem is part of the second verse. Only Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokein, Hashem Echad has to be said with full alertness. Baruch Shem, Ve'ahavta, Ve'hayah, Ve'yomer, you have to say all those, 
but not, you don't have to be fully awake. Halacha dalid, Misha haya osek bimlacha. If a person was involved in some kind of work, doesn't mean working for somebody else, he was simply himself busy with something. Mafsik ad shayikra parshari shona kula. He must stop until he finishes reading the entire first portion. It's not enough, just the first verse. Since you're doing your own work, you're not on somebody else's clock, so you have to stop for the entire first parsha. Now that Ram says even more, not just yourself, but even hired workers, artisans, they have to stop their work to read the first paragraph. So their reading isn't what's called temporary or without focus. They should stop their work, whatever they're doing, even if they're on someone else's watch. By the way. And read, by the way, exactly, and, and read the first parasha. The hashar, the rest, korehu kedarako, you read as you are, doing whatever you do. Afilo haya omed berosha ilan, berosha kotel, even if you're in a place where focus is very hard, you're on top of a tree, you're on top of a wall. Korebim komo, umevarech lefaneho laachara, you must read the entire Shema in place, with the blessings before and after. Again, you don't have to stop only for the first portion, but you have to read the rest wherever you are. Halacha hei haya oseg betalmud Torah, another situation. A person was learning Torah, learning all night, man kriyat shema, and it comes the time for reading Shema. Posek, he must stop learning, vikore, read the Shema, umevarech lefaneha ula achareha, with the blessings before and after. So kriyat shema is more important than Talmud Torah. The Talmud even says, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who studied Torah all day, Torah to um nato, that was all he did. He had to stop for Kriyachma. Hayao sek bitzorchei rabim. What if a person was dealing with communal matters? He's taking care of something nobody else can do on behalf of the Jewish community. Because he's busy taking care of this uh, communal issue, it comes time for Shema. He finds himself not able to read yet. He's in the middle of what he's doing. It says the Rambam lo yifsok. It's so important to work in communal matters that you don't have to stop. Ela yigmori iskehen v'yikra. Finish their business. And then you read if there's still some time left to read. Next situation. What if a person was involved in a meal? This is very important. He's eating breakfast. Or he's taking a bath. He's in the bathhouse. It was a whole process in those days. It wasn't just a shower, you go in and out. He came in, a whole treatment, a hot tub. A, yeah, massage, the saunas, the whole business. Or you were getting a haircut. Or you were working in a tannery. You were flipping leather, hides. That also took a lot of time. Or they were involved in a court case. So interestingly, in all these cases, Gomer, you can finish what you're doing. And then read the Shema. You don't have to stop breakfast. You can finish breakfast and then go eat. Finish the court case, then go eat. Then go say Shema. But if you were worried, perhaps the time of reading is going to pass. Upasak vikara. And you stopped anyway and you read, Hareza Mishubach, that's praiseworthy. The Ravid argues, the Ravid says, if you're in the middle of eating, you must stop for Kriyat Shema. No such thing. In the middle of breakfast, you're not going to say Shema. Nevertheless, the Ramam holds that it's, that, that it's okay. And the Shulchan Aruch says that it depends when you started. If you started before the time of Shema even started, I don't know why, you woke up at four in the morning, you decided to have a full-on breakfast. So you began before you can anyway read Shema halachically. Then you can finish your meal and then read Shema. But if you began once the time started already, you have to stop and read Shema. So you're supposed to eat before you pray. Right. Is, what is the wrong one? Seven, Let's say you dive in early. You were on the road. Uh, yeah. Or, by the way, here, here's an, a, another case where it could happen as easily as, as by night. Shema Shal Arvit. You started a meal before sunset, a big nice supper, and then it went into to nighttime. So the same thing. You can, you can finish... And then, 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 then read the Shema. Halacha Zayim. Next situation. Mishi Arad Litbol. Somebody who went to the mikvah. In times of old, and we're going to see more about this later, if a person got a certain level of Tum'ah, a certain level of impurity, in order for him to deal with anything holy, mm. he had to go to the mikvah first. So first thing in the morning, he's, he's going to be in the mikvah. Now the mikvah was not like today, in the back of Chabad, you have a beautiful mikvah. Mikvah meant walking, going far away to an ocean or some, some body of water. So you're there in the mikvah, and you see... It's coming time for Kriyat Shema. And I remember, according to the Rambam, the ideal time for Shema is before sunrise. Six minutes before sunrise, you should finish it with the sunrise. If you see that you're going to be able to get out of the mikvah and put on your clothes before sunrise and read properly Shema, so go out of the mikvah, get dressed, 
and read Shema. V'im haya mityadei Shema tanetz hachama. Kodem sheyikra. But if you're worried that the sun is going to rise before you get a chance to read and you're going to miss the ideal time for the mik for, for Shema, says the Rambam, yitkaseh b'mayim shuhu omed bahan v'yikra. Better to read Shema on time, naked, in the water, just cover yourself in the water till your neck, and read the Shema. And read it late. Okay. Then read it after sunrise. He's not even reading it late because the time goes till three hours in the day. But the ideal time is so important that you can stay in the mikvah and do it. So we're doing this all wrong. We need to all do this early in the morning. Well, that's the Rambam's opinion. According to Shulchan Aruch, the halakha lama is that it's, it's, it's all ideal. Till three hours in the day, it's all ideal. So what we do today in the morning, if you dive in here 645, you're, you're, you're fine. You're going to always make some money. He's giving you the black and white, the, 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 the after parameters of what's legal and what's yes. legal. Yes, yes. Below yit kaseh, but you cannot cover yourself though. If you're going to use this uh, trick of covering yourself in the water, you have to make sure that it's lo b'mayim haraim shereichan ra, that it's not bad water that smells bad. Below b'meha mishra, nor is it water that's used for soaking flax or canvas. Below b'mayim slulim, and it can't be too clear. Because if the water is too clear, you see your uh, nakedness. And we're going to see that that's a very big, it's very essential to be covered, to be tznuyut when you reach Shema. So if you can see your nakedness, you can't reach Shema. What you should do is cover yourself in murky waters, which don't have a bad smell, and you read in your place. Okay. From now on, we move to reading the Shema itself. We talked about all the situations. When it comes time of Shema, how to deal with them. Now let's go to Shema itself. When you are in the middle of reading Shema, you can't hint with your eyes, no winking, or gesturing with your lips. And you can't point with your fingers. So your reading should not be unfocused. The Ramam talks about the entire Kriyat Shema. Even though before with the workers, he talked about only the first portion already makes it not arai, not, not you know, uh, haphazard. But over here you have to read it for the whole Shema. You have to be focused. No pointing, no gesturing. And that's the truth. Even in Halakha, it's forbidden. When you read Shema, you can't be motioning with your eyes. If you're in the middle of davening and you're up to, up to the point of Shema, someone comes to talk to you, we'll see about talking. But you can't point and you can't gesture. What about the putting spirit in? Ah, same thing. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get to that when it comes to Tefillin. The Im Asa came, if you did so, you ended up making some movements with your bodies, uh, with your body parts. During Shema, Afal Pishi Yatzayadei Chovato, even though you fulfilled your obligation, Hayezim Meguneh, that's considered disgusting. Another law about reading Shema, V'tzarich Lahashmiya Leozno Kishuhu Koreh, you must allow it to be heard by your ear when you read. You have to say Shema audibly. V'im lo Hishmiya Leozno, but if after the fact you didn't, you said Shema quietly, Yatsa, you fulfilled your obligation. The commentaries say you have to at least mouth it. You can't just scan the Shema. You can't look at it with your eyes. That's not even called reading at all. So you can say it quietly, even if you don't hear your Yotzeh, you, you fulfill it. But the ideally, lachash. you have to um, hear it audibly. That's right. V'tzarich ledakdek be'otiyotav. You also have to be precise grammatically with the letters. V'im lo dikdek, if you weren't precise grammatically, Yatsa, you still, were, you still fulfill your obligation. But again, ideally, you have to be medakdek. Halachatet, ketzad didakdek. What does that mean? How do you be precise when saying Shema? Yishmor, you have to be careful. Shalo yirapeh hechazak, velo yechazek harafeh. Don't weaken the strong and don't strengthen the weak. Many letters in the, in the alphabet have dots in them. It's called dagesh or chazak. If there's no dot, it's called rafeh. So, for example, right in the beginning, ve'avtad shem olokecha, bechol levavcha. If you say vechol levavcha, vet instead of bet, that's problematic. Or you say, Bechol Libabcha, with two bets instead of a vet. That's Chazak and Rafa, you can't switch those. Velo Yaniach Hanad, Velo Yanid Hanach. You can't rest the mover, and you can't move the rester. What does this mean? One of the vowels in, in Hebrew is the Shava, it makes the I sound. It's in the beginning of the word, it makes a sound. Typically, in the middle of a word, it's called the Shava Nach, it rests, it's just silent. So you can't express a silent Shava, and you can't silent an expressive Shava. So you have to. Make sure to say it all precisely. Lefichach, for this reason, tzarich liten revach ben hadvekim. You must make a space between letters that naturally stick to each other. Ben kol shte otiyot hadomot. Between all two similar letters, sha'achat mehen sof teva, v'ha'acheret tchilat teva ha'smuchala. Where one of them is the end of one word, and the next one is the beginning of the next word. It sound like one word. It sound like one word. And that'll be like 
resting the expressed one. Kigon bechol levavcha, like we say in the first parasha. Avtashim gacha bechol levavcha. Kore bechol. You read the word bechol. Vishohe and pause. Vichozer vikore levavcha, and then read the next word, because otherwise something bechol levavcha, one big word. Vichen. So too in the next parasha, vayayim shamoa, we have vaavadetem mehera. Ends with a mem, starts with a mem. If you read it all together, it's like vaavadetem mehera. It's one long word. You have to pause between the two words. Hakanaf ptil. In the third paragraph. You also have to stop between those two words. This is a bigger chidush, because here it's a fe and a pe. So it won't really sound like one word if you say it all together, but because it's the same letter, you still have to pause. Hakanaf, ptil techelet. Also, v'tzarich leva'er zayin shel tizkiru. You have to express the zayin of tizkiru. In the third paragraph, we say leman tizkiru. Some people make a mistake and say tizkiru with a sin. That's, that's, a, that's misproper pronunciation. You have to say z. Here there's the z sound. Tizkiru, to remember. V'tzarich leha'arich badalet you also have to lengthen the Dalet of Echad. So you have enough time to think about the fact that you're making Hashem king over heaven and earth and all the four directions. So you hear people in Shul saying Echad, they, they stress the D, or the Dalet of Echad, because it gives them time to think about Hashem being king everywhere. You also cannot swallow the Chet. Don't say Echad, like it's too quickly. Because if you do, Echad. The Talmud says it will sound like you're saying not one. If, you, if everybody hears the e, the aleph, and then they don't hear the chad, so it'll sound like e is like e, like not. Not chad, not one. And then you'll be saying the exact opposite of what you're trying to say. Shema Yisrael, you're trying to say Hashem is one, and here you're saying Hashem is not one. Halacha yud. Kore adam et shema bechol lashon she'yeh mevina. A person can read the shema in any language that he understands. However, v'hakore bechol lashon, when you read another language, tzarich li'izaher midivrei shibush, you must be very careful from all the mistakes grammatically that can come up in that language. So you really have to be an expert in a different language to properly translate it. <coughs> you also have to be precise in the pronunciation of the words the same way you would be precise in Hebrew. English doesn't really exist, but let's say you have a different language where you have to say the words exactly right or different sounds, pronounce them differently. Um, with the Shema, you have to do that. Many commentators argue in the Rambam, they say you cannot say... Shema in any language. Ba'alacha, Shulchan Aruch, it's brought down that you could, but highly ideal to say Shema in Hebrew. Unlike the Amidah, where we say that you can say it in English to begin with, when it comes to the Shema, because it's about saying the words precisely, it's much better to say it in Hebrew than to say it in another language. Ha'alacha yud alef, ha'korele mafreya, lo yatsa. If you read the Shema backwards, you didn't fulfill your obligation. What does it mean backwards? Ba'med varim amurim, when are we talking about? Beseder ha'psukim. In the order of the verses. You said verse 2 before verse 1. Aval im hikdim parsha le parsha. But if you said the second portion before the first portion, you started off v'hayayim shamoa, and then you said v'ahavta, afal pishe eno rashai, even though technically you're not allowed to. Ani omer, it's a rare expression in the Rambam. Ani omer, I say, sheyatza, that he does fulfill his obligation. Lefishe enas muchala batorah. Because in the Torah scroll, shema v'hayayim shamoa v'yomer are not one after another. They're not even near each other. They're in three different passages. And they're also out of order. Vayomer was last week's parsha. It's first. And then comes Shema, then Vayam Shema. So if you switch around the order, it's also okay oh, after the fact. Mm-hmm. Huh? Right. Yeah. 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 Wow. But only, only B'diavad. L'chadchila, initially you should say it in order that the sages made it. Kara pasuk v'chazar v'krao pam shniya. You read a verse and you read it again, purposely. Hareze meguna, that's considered disgusting. You don't overread the Shema. It's, you're saying it once, you say it, that's, that's what it is. Kara mila achat ukfala. If you read one word and then said it again, go and shakara, shema, shema, like you said shema twice, mishat kinoto, you actually shut him up loudly. In the times of the Talmud, there was a big concern that people were associated not only with Jewish religion, but also with other faiths. And when they said shema, shema, they were talking to one God and a second God, two gods. So from then on, they forbade to say words double and all in the, in, in the shema, to the point that someone else can come in and, and, and quiet you. Halacha yud bet, kra'a serugin. What if you read it with breaks? You started, and you took a walk, you come back, you continue. Yatsa. That's okay. You fulfill your obligation. Afilu shaha ben serug le serug. kula. Even if you waited so long in one break, to enough time to finish the whole Shema. You literally went out, you said the first verse, you went off, had breakfast, came back. Yatsa. Fulfill your obligation. Vuhu sheyikra al haseder. But that's provided that you read it all in order. You took breaks, but in the end you said it in order. What if you read it while dozing off? 
It's not, he's not awake, but he's not fully asleep. Yatsa, he has fulfilled his obligation. Ubilvad erbe pasuk rishon. But the first verse, he has to be, um, he has to be fully awake, fully aware. Halacha yud gimel safek kara kriyat shema safek lo kara. You're in doubt. It's eight in the morning. You don't remember. Did I say shema? Did I not say shema? Chazer vekare. You should go back and read it. Not only should you read it, umevarech lefaneha ula achareha. You should also make the blessings before and after. Because what's called sveka de oraita, if you're in doubt about the biblical obligation, you're not even sure if you read the Torah part, the Shema part, you have to also do the other parts, the brachot of Kriyat Shema. Aval im but if you know that you read the Shema, the Shema itself you said, and now your doubt is only bidrabanan. Your doubt is in the rabbinical part of the Shema. You don't know if you said the blessings or not. We have a rule, whenever we're in doubt about brachot, we don't make the bracha again. You don't go back and make the blessing. If, you made, if you're reading the Shema and you made a mistake, and then you continue and you remember your mistake. Go back to the place where you made a mistake, continue from there. This happens unfortunately all the time. You spaced out in the middle of reading and you finished one portion and you don't know which one you finished. You don't know which one you just finished, but you have to start. The Rambam rules, you have to go back to the beginning. Which is the beginning of the Ahavta. Other, uh, other, other this commentaries... Is, this is only for the Shema. Only for the Shema. Yeah, yeah other commentaries say you, you can never go back to the Ahavta because the whole idea is you, you lost track which one you finished. Mm-hmm. So you obviously finished one portion. So you only, only have to go back to the Hayah. But the Rambam says because you didn't have intent, you're, 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 you lost track, back to the beginning. Halakha <laughs> Yudalad. That's all if you know that you finished a portion. Ta'ab emtsaha perek. What if you made a mistake in the middle of the, cha- middle of the paragraph? Ve'eno yodea lehechan pasak. And you don't know where you stopped. Chozer l'rosh ha'perek. Go back to the beginning of that paragraph. Haya kore uchtav tam. This happens also to everybody. The word uchtav tam, al-mizapitecho v'sharecha, is twice in the Shema. Once in the first paragraph, once in the second one. So you're reading the verse uchtav tam. Ve'eno yodea im hu be'uchtav tam shel Shema o be'uchtav tam shel v'yayim shamoa. And he forgets which uchtav tam is he at. First one or the second one. Chozer l'uchtav tam shel Shema. You have to go back to the uchtav tam in Shema, in the first paragraph. But if the doubt arose after he read the words, which are at the end of the second paragraph, you don't have to go back. Chances are you're following your tongue. And naturally, if you were at the second one, you would continue. So you can assume you're in the second paragraph, and you don't have to go back. Okay, what happens if you're reading the Shema and you meet somebody else? or somebody else met you. So now it depends where you are in the Shema. Im haya ben perek le perek. First he discusses a case if you're between chapters. You're between the blessings of the Shema or between the chapters of the Shema. So here's how it goes. Posek umatchil v'sho'el shlom mishu chayav b'chvodo. If the person here is someone that you're obligated to honor, then you can stop and initiate a conversation. You could even greet them. Let's say you met your father or your teacher. Or somebody wiser than you. There's somebody you have to honor. You can stop in the middle, because you're, you're between chapters, and initiate a conversation. Ask them how they're doing. You can also return a greeting to any person. Who gave you peace. So to initiate, it has to be somebody you're obligated to honor. To return, it could be anybody. That's only if you're in between chapters. If you were reading in the middle of the, of the paragraph, you can never stop to initiate a conversation. Only if it's somebody who you're afraid of, and it means fear of death. Like a king, it's a non Jewish king, or uh, a person, like a, a terrorist. He will, he will literally kill you if you don't return his greeting. Head of the mafia. Or anybody like that. But if it's only somebody who you're obligated to honor, like your father or teacher, and you're in the middle of a chapter, in the middle of a paragraph, if he greeted you, you can stop and return his greeting. But you cannot initiate the conversation. And now the Rambam defines what's considered between the chapters. Where, where does that apply? 
it applies between the first and second blessing. So you already said, Baruch Atah Hashem, Yotzer HaMe'orot. You didn't start a Havat Olam yet, and someone comes to you. If it's somebody that you have to honor, you can initiate a conversation. Ben Shniya Lishma, between the second blessing and Shema, HaBacher B'Amor Yisrael Ba'ava, and before you started Shema, this, that's called Ben HaPrakim. Ben Shma Lev Hayayim Shamoa, between the first two paragraphs. Ben Vahayayim Shamoa Lev Hayomer, second and third. Those are all called Ben Aprakim. And therefore, Ben Aprakim Ha'elu, Sho'el Mipnei HaKavod, Umeshiv Shalom Lechal Adam. Between these chapters, you can initiate, ask how somebody that you have to honor is doing, and return a greeting to anybody. Aval Ben Vayomer, Le'emet V'yatsiv, between the third paragraph and the next paragraph, even though it looks like two different paragraphs, Harezek Ke'emtza HaPerek, it's considered the, begin, the, the middle of a chapter, and therefore, V'lo Yafsik, you cannot stop, Ela Lish'ol Mipnei HaYirah, to initiate someone that you fear, and to return a greeting of somebody that you have to honor, but a regular person you cannot uh, make an exchange. Today, we follow Shulchan Aruch, that between Shema, I don't care where you're up to, which chapters, it doesn't matter where you are, you don't hint to anybody, because we don't have people that you have to honor to that level, or that we're afraid of to that level, so we just keep it all bli sec, no interruptions at all.